The Iowa State football team bounced back from last week's loss with a big win over TCU at home. Brock Purdy accounted for 349 total yards and four touchdowns, and the Cyclone defense scored their second touchdown of the year. The Cyclones dominated TCU in every category. Iowa State 49, TCU 24. The Iowa State volleyball team had a nice week, defeating both Kansas and West Virginia in three set sweeps. We'll tell you who stood out for them. Cyclone Insiders starts now. Welcome to Cyclone Insiders. I'm your host, Ben Olson, joined at the desk today with Jared Brevard and Hannah Allen. And guys, what a great week for Cyclone sports. That it was. We're going to start off with football, where the Cyclones bounced back from last week's loss with a great game against the TCU Horned Frogs. Some stat lines that really caught our attention this week. Brock Purdy, 247 pass yards, two touchdowns. On the ground, guys, 102 rushing yards and two touchdowns. And we finally got some production out of our running backs. Johnny Lang recording two rushing touchdowns, kind of establishing himself as that starting back for Iowa State. And our defense looked fantastic in a, in a long game, really. But uh, Orion Vance looked great again, and they got their second defensive touchdown of the year. Hannah, let's start with you. What were some of your general thoughts on this game? I think it was a great game. We really came out and showed what we can do and what we have the capability to do. Um, it was nice to see people step up that we haven't seen step up before, like Johnny Lane. And I think that this game really showed like what what we can do in the future, in the future games. Right. I think it was a really good answer to a, a team that we really didn't even recognize last week that didn't look like the Iowa State team we've kind of come to know. Jared, you got any general thoughts that kind of stuck out to you? Yeah, say this was uh, just the bounce back that Iowa State needed uh, after that uh, loss last week in, uh, in Waco. And they got, got the offense rolling right away, which was good to see. Hadn't, hadn't seen much of that yet. Uh, got out to the early lead, kept the lead, um, and were able to, uh, to kind of sustain that TCU comeback uh, with, uh, with answering some more points there at the end of the game. So uh, impressive stuff for the Cyclones this weekend. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the best the offense has looked since, of course, the ULM game. But ULM's defense isn't anything to write home about. But TCU putting up 49 on them is really impressive, guys. Uh, and, of course, TCU head coach Gary Patterson said after the game, they kicked our butts, which was really nice to hear that Iowa State was able to have a full performance like that, kind of dominating every category. So, like I said, they put up 49 points. Uh, Jared, which offensive player impressed you most for Iowa State? You know, it's easy to say someone like Brock Purdy or Lang scoring the touchdowns or even... Deshante having the 10 receptions, but I'm actually going to go with Landon Akers this week. Okay. Uh, only with one catch, like most of the most of the offense, but it came at a time where it was needed most. Uh, the Cyclones had just given up two straight touchdowns, needing an answer to kind of put the game away. Uh, Landon had his number called, uh, and he delivered, even through a face mask penalty there. Uh, he was able to break the tackle, mm -hmm. beat his man, and uh, get the yards for Iowa State. So. That was very impressive. And he was active on special teams in this game as well. I think he downed a punt inside the five he was. and uh, made some great tackles. Hannah, what about you? Most impressive person on the O side? You got to go with Brock Purdy. <laughs> I know everyone can say it, but he's on fire right now. And to see him put up 247 passing yards is insane. Like, we, we've, seen, we've seen Brocktober, but this is a whole new level of Brocktober. Yeah, no, uh, you kind of stole my answer. If, no, if any, nobody said it, I was obviously going to have to say it because he's finally starting to get, well, not as much national media attention as you would expect with his stat line, but he's starting to play like the Heisman candidate that some people hyped him up to be mm -hmm. in the preseason. Uh, I think for me, just to you know, kind of even things out, I'll go Johnny Lang with the two rushing touchdowns, uh, led the team in carries, uh, Sheldon Crony still comes in, you know, in some important blocking situations, and I see they're trying to get Jareel Brock going, mm -hmm. but he's pretty young, had a tough time against his TCU defense, so it was nice to see Johnny Lang uh, finding some holes and uh, starting to show some consistency in this running game. 
But, you I mean, a lot can be said about Iowa State's defense, too. I think you guys would agree. Uh, Hannah, what about on the defensive side of the ball? Who impressed? Okay, I'm not going to sing his name, but Awuzarike. Awuzarike? Awuzarike, yeah. But, um, he's been great all year. He's been great all year. That's what I was going to say. But he, this game, he really came through, too. And just he's been consistent. I think he's been one of our most consistent players this season. And that's what... Iowa State likes to see his consistency, mm -hmm. and that helped a lot in this one. Yeah, I think Coach Heacock's been super impressed with his D-line so far, especially with Jaquan Bailey out, you guys. Some mm -hmm. players are stepping up. Jared, what about you? So that leads into my uh, defensive player of the week here, Zach Peterson. Uh, oh, coming yeah. in, Coming in and uh, filling that, that Jaquan Bailey role. Very nice. He got six, six tackles. Uh, had a to share tackle for the loss there, a quarterback hurry. Uh, and he was the one that forced the fumble on the, uh, the kickoff. So uh, good stuff out of him. You could tell, I mean, being a young sophomore, he was showing a little bit of lack of experience there, kind of over pursuing in the backfield a little bit. But overall, great job uh, filling in for Bailey. Yeah, he definitely looked like he belonged this week. I agree mm -hmm. with you. Um, and some people have been talking about him being undersized. I don't know if you guys saw this, but at Coach Campbell's weekly press conference today, he dropped the quote. He called himself a ding dong for thinking about trying to gray shirt Zach Peterson because he's yeah. been playing great for the Cyclones this year. Um, for me, I'm going to go, this is a toss up. Matt Leo has been doing a great job at the defensive end spot as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go Aaron McDonald out of the middle linebacker position. Had that late game sack that uh, really kind of was the final nail in the coffin for this game. And he's kind of been a nice change of pace on the, for the Iowa State linebackers this year, I think. But any more thoughts you guys want to add about this game? I mean, we could talk about it for hours because, I mean, Iowa State looked great. But like I said, it's next week, and they're starting to think about West Virginia. Yeah. I don't know. We just got to keep it up. What we did this week was unbelievable. And to, I wouldn't say that we – I would never guess that we would have beat TCU 49-24. But it's good confidence booster, and I'm excited to see what we can do against West Virginia. Yeah, the line was only two and a half, so to beat them by 25 was pretty impressive. But uh, that was at Jack Trice Stadium. This week, they're going to be in Morgantown. We got the Riot Bowl, folks. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a test for Iowa State because they have not played great on the road at all. Of course, that only, only they had the Baylor game, and it was very hot there. But, uh, of course, Morgantown... Uh, has a stadium similar to Jack Trice, but Iowa State has never really performed too well there. They're going to play West Virginia. There's a, Iowa State is favored by 10.5 points right now. West Virginia started 0-2 in the Big 12. Um, going into this game, what do you guys, Jared, what do you think Iowa State needs to carry in from last week if they're going to beat the Mountaineers? I think uh, start, starting the game off with the offense, uh, getting their first drive, going down and getting points, uh, that's something that they struggle with in Baylor and getting behind mm -hmm. um, early and having to come back. I think, I think with uh, this week, this past weekend when Iowa State scored, that first drive it just opened up everything for the defense and the offense. The rest of the game, I uh, got the confidence up, uh, and they also had a lot less, you know, penalties or self-inflicted wounds that we saw in Baylor. There was less of those this past weekend, so I think uh, winning that turnover battle and scoring early is going to be very important. I completely agree. This TCU game was really the first game all season where you saw Iowa State jump out to an early lead, and it made a difference. Hannah, what about you? Uh, what does Iowa State need to do? Okay, I'll go opposite of what Jared said because um, every loss we've had this season has been less than three points, so what we need to do is really close out the game. We have to keep mm. our defense going the, into the fourth quarter and keep the, stop those teams from scoring so late. and. We have to score late too, but we can also stop those teams from scoring late because so we lost to um, sorry I can't remember we got lost to Iowa seventeen to eighteen and that was another late loss and then Baylor twenty one to twenty three and that was another late loss so we got to keep the momentum going into the fourth quarter and finish strong. Right, I think uh, I think it comes down to what Coach Campbell says all the time. It's going to matter if we can execute the details. I think Iowa State needs to play a full four quarters to win a road game this year. And I think once they knock that first one out, they'll feel a lot better. Of course, West Virginia had a pretty good game against Texas, a really solid first three quarters before Texas kind of ran away with it last week in the fourth quarter. So uh, it's going to be important for Iowa State to finish. And uh, they're also going to need to score points again. West Virginia put up 31 against Texas last week. But uh, Iowa State has the capability. 
So like I said, right now they're favored by 10 and a half. That line's been increasing uh, since it was announced. Mm -hmm. Score predictions, who wants to go first? You can take it. Me? Thanks. <laughs> um, oh. I know, it's a tough one. I'll give you that. I know. Um, I'll go 24-21 Iowa State. So you think it's going to be a close game? Yes, I do think it will be a close game. Road? But I think we can pull it out. Road tests are always very difficult. Jared? Mm -hmm. I agree in the fact that it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a little higher scoring than that. Uh, I've got 34-28 Iowa State. Uh, West Virginia very impressive against uh, Texas last week. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as people think. I, uh, I agree with you that it's going to be more high scoring. I think Iowa State needs to be able to score on this West Virginia defense because they really haven't looked great all year. So mm -hmm. I hope it's not a road thing that our offense plays bad. So I want to see Iowa State come out and put up a lot of points on West Virginia. But I also think our defense might struggle a little bit because uh, West Virginia's air rate is always pretty decent. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go Iowa State 42, West Virginia 35. No field goals in this game, just touchdowns. <laughs> so that means that I think West Virginia is going to cover. Uh, do you have West Virginia covering, Jared? I do, yes. Hannah, you also think West Virginia is going to cover that 10-point spread. And folks, that, since we're talking about spreads, that means it is time for the Cyclone Insiders Big 12 Pick'em. All right, last week was a brutal week for me and Jared. Jared going two and three, winning the Iowa State game and the Baylor game, that was a good pick. Baylor has looked good. I went one and four, only winning the Iowa State game, which is what I'm supposed to do, right, as the Cyclone Insiders host. Uh, so we only have three games this week. We already gave you our Iowa State West Virginia picks. Uh, so the first game I'm gonna look at is Texas, Oklahoma, you guys. The Red River rivalry, that's gonna be a prime time game this weekend. Oklahoma has looked good, but didn't cover against, the 35 is a huge line, but didn't cover against Kansas, one by 25. So Oklahoma is favored by 10 and a half over Texas. Jared, who do you have uh, winning that matchup? I have Oklahoma winning, but I have a Texas covering. That 10 is a lot. Uh, in the last five regular season matchups in the Red River rivalry have come down to one score or less. Uh, so I like it to be a competitive game. Texas covers a 10, but Oklahoma wins. I think, yeah, this rivalry is always competitive. I expect it to go down to the wire this year, but I'm gonna go opposite of you. I have the Longhorns winning, folks. I think Texas is gonna steal one from Oklahoma and Jalen Hurts. I don't think he's cut out for that Red River rivalry. We'll see, Texas is gonna cover with a win. Hannah, what about you? I have Oklahoma winning this one. I think Jalen Hurts is unstoppable, and I don't think that um, Texas will be able to stop that offense. All right, we're gonna move to the next game, the only other game in the Big 12 this week. Baylor against Texas Tech. Baylor off to that 5-0 start, jumped in the, to the AP Top 25 rankings this week, favored by 11. Hannah, do you, who do you have uh, covering this game? I've got Baylor. Gonna go with the undefeated team, just like the San Francisco 49ers and New England Patriots. I think that we'll keep it going with Baylor. It's a solid pick, it's a solid pick. I have picked against Baylor the last two weeks, and boy, have I learned my lesson. I'm going to pick Texas Tech to cover the spread against Baylor. I do think Baylor's going to end up winning this game, but this one's a, always a pretty heated rivalry as well, kind of an underrated one in the Big 12. I think it's going to be a close game that Tech's going to cover the spread, but Baylor will move to 6-0. and Jared, what about you? Yep, I'm going to echo what you say. I got uh, Tech covering uh, that 11. That's a, that's a big number, uh, but I like Baylor to come out on top. Yeah, yep, good picks. So uh, only three games this week, so Hannah's not going to be able to catch up to our records right away with her first Insiders <laughs> pick em. but we're going to be doing it all season. It uh, doesn't look like I'm going to win because I'm off to a pretty terrible start, but uh, keep following along, folks. And now let's move to the next Iowa State team that has, uh, was putting on a clinic this last week, the volleyball team, guys. They looked really good. Mm -hmm. Iowa State had two games, one on Wednesday and Saturday. On Wednesday, they swept the Kansas Jayhawks at Hilton in three sets. Uh, Josie Earps led the team with 15 kills in that game. Eleanor Holthouse was second with eight. And uh, they, they had both uh, 
Mikhail Schuler back and uh, Piper, I believe, was back in that game. She was not. She came, came back for she West Virginia. She was on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. All right. She Excuse missed me. that. Missed so, the Kansas game. Uh, Jenna Brandt still did a great job filling in on mm-hmm. Wednesday that they could win that three-set sweep with their backup setter. So it's really good to see that out of this young team. Um, general thoughts on that match. Hannah, what did you think of Iowa State's performance against the Jayhawks? Well, Josie Earps, she stepped up, and she's the lone senior on the team, and she was there. She was making every play. She was the key player for that game, and um, it was just amazing to see her step up and her last season with the Cyclones and to really prove more than what she has proven in the past. Right. She has been doing a great job as uh, leading this team as the only senior. I think uh, Coach Christie has been really impressed with her. Jared, you got any thoughts on that match? Oh uh, Yeah, once again, Jenna Brandt uh, filling in nicely for Piper. Had 31 assists across the three sets. Uh, so, you know, not slowing down at all in the set or roll there. Um, the Cyclones were able to hit 283. Um, across the three sets while, like, while hitting uh, 159 in the first, coming back strong the other two sets, uh, and felt kind of in control the whole game, uh, even though Kansas kind of kept it close there, uh, no doubt, and no doubt for the Cyclones, they're coming out with the victory. Right, right. Um, and then on Saturday, excuse my error, I thought, I misread it, thought Piper was back. So they finally get their starting setter, Piper, back on Saturday when they traveled to West Virginia, and they still were able to sweep the Mountaineers in three sets, in a really solid all-around performance with uh, some good contributions from some young players. Annie Hatch led the team, the freshman, led the team in kills with 12. And West Virginia was a little bit better opponent than the Jayhawks were, you guys. Um, Did you see anything, Jared, out of uh, any of the Iowa State players who really impressed you in that match? Well, obviously Piper coming back um, off of the injury there, not missing a step, having 41 assists uh, in the game there. And... And what was really impressive was the hitting percentage. You had 374 for the Cyclones, uh, helping them stay in control the whole game. West Virginia kept that second you know, set close, but uh, just an overall good performance from the Cyclones and never thought the game was in doubt. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all three of those sets they won, really 25 to 22 was the closest set. Otherwise, they kept Baylor, or, uh, excuse me, West Virginia out of the 20s. So, uh, really good all-around performance by Iowa State. Hannah, do you have anything to add? Um, Herrera, she killed it in, at, against Kansas, and then she also performed really well against West Virginia. And she's someone I think that we can always look to defensively to put up those blocks and to get us some more points. And she's a player, uh, of course, the volleyball team went on an uh, exhibition tour in South America this summer. And so Herrera, she got to go home to her home country. And I think she played uh, for one of the Olympic teams, I believe, as well, Mm -hmm. for the Argentinian team, excuse me. So uh, she's someone who really worked on her game over the summer, and she could have a big year for Iowa State in Big 12 play. Uh, The Cyclones return home now for three straight matches at Hilton against Baylor, Texas Tech, and TCU. That was a really big to get their first Big 12 road test and have it be a win, you guys. Mm-hmm. Now returning home, do you expect Iowa State to go on a little bit of a run here? Hannah? I do. I think they have nothing but proven how well they can do. They graduated a lot of key players last season, but I think the young players are stepping up and the players that were there are staying consistent with that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Jared? Do you see Iowa State go on a little bit of a run? I do. It's going to be a little difficult. Uh, against Baylor upcoming here, but um, again, it's in Ames, so you never know what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be a tough, tough game. Uh, but, you, know, you know, Texas Tech and TCU upcoming, I think they can win, win those two games, uh, if not all three. But, yeah, Baylor coming to town, it's going to be a tough opponent for the Cyclones. I completely agree with that. Uh, of course, Iowa State off to a 2-1 start in Big 12 play. Baylor's going to be a tough matchup to get to 2-2. Two two, but the next two matchups are pretty even. But with that home court advantage, hopefully Iowa State can pick up a win. And it's going to be really crucial that I think all these young players get a start uh, two, or excuse me, four out of their first six Big 12 games at home. Mm -hmm. I was forgetting that they went on the road against Texas. But uh, I think that's really crucial for them as they become uh, more mature, you know, and they kind of get used to some of these environments. So keep an eye out for the Iowa State volleyball team. Hannah, you're our soccer soccer expert. Iowa State's got off to a bit of a rough start this year. Yes. But uh, what are you thinking about the rest of Big 12 play? Well, 
it's a rough start when you look at wins and losses, but when you look at the way they played, right. it's, it's a better start than what they've had in the past. We've had seen freshmen step up in huge ways, and I think this season, I think they will be better than they have been, but I don't think they will get to that point where they want to be, if you know what I mean. So they, they have all the tools they need, but not yet. That's a fair point. Uh, seems seems like uh, they're always like right on that cusp, and I'm sure uh, one of these upcoming seasons, Iowa State soccer team could be getting there. Off to a three and nine start this year, but a lot of close games if you look at the schedule. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye out for them. Anything else, Cyclone Athletics, that you guys want to talk about? I'm good here. Hoping for another solid week. Football team goes to West Virginia. Volleyball's got three straight matches at home. Uh, that's all we have for you on this edition of Cyclone Insiders. We'll be back next week to break down all of the matches and events and games with more analysis. And as always, go Cyclones.